Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Liberty University for today's Veterans Celebration, during which we want to honor all who have served on our behalf around the world to protect the freedoms we enjoy as Americans. Joining us today as a special guest is a young man who has become known as the boy from Omaha Beach. Please direct your attention to the video board to hear his story. In June 2014, my 11-year-old son and I went to Normandy, France for the 70th anniversary of D-Day. As part of his personal remembrance project called Project Vigil, my son spent four days in the American cemetery teaching visitors about three paratroopers buried there. On D-Day, June 6, the local police wouldn't let him re-enter the cemetery. So, he took his 48-star World War II-era American flag down to Omaha Beach and planted his homemade flagpole firmly in the sand. All he wanted to do was say thank you to the young Americans who fought and died on that beach exactly 70 years earlier. Together, we unfurled the flag into the wind where it whipped and snapped with such force that he strained to hold it steady. When he turned his gaze to the English Channel, he saw a vision of the spirits of our infantry soldiers heading for the shore on D-Day morning. He was so moved by his vision, he raised his hand to salute them. And for a moment, he was just a little boy with a flag, standing alone on a beach in Normandy. He held that flag and his salute for an hour and a half. And as he imagined their lives ending in violent, horrible deaths upon the same bloody Omaha beach sand where he stood, he began to cry. He briefly broke his salute to wipe those tears away. After a while, people began to come down to the water to see the saluting boy. Children approached him to see if he was real. Some teased him to try to break his concentration. Others wanted to have their picture taken with him. Then came the TV news crews, but he didn't smile. His eyes remained fixed on the spirits of our soldiers coming ashore. As the tide crept in, he refused to retreat a single step. Members of our armed forces encouraged him. Our veterans saluted him. And then a lone trumpeter joined him in his vigil. After an hour had passed, his knees began to weaken. The muscles in his arms and hands began to cramp, but he didn't want to leave the beach. He stayed strong for them and for their memory. Then he raised his right hand, a signal to me that he was ready to say goodbye. I took the flag, and he collapsed in my arms. As I held him, I was struck by deep sadness for all the mothers and fathers who never had the chance to comfort their sons in June of 1944. In his left hand, he held the most beautiful flag in the world. In his heart, he held the flame high for those who made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. In his soul, he held the future of the American idea. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm liberty welcome to the boy from Omaha Beach. A native of San Antonio, Texas, Oliver North is a 22-year Marine Corps veteran who served in Vietnam. The 1968 Naval Academy graduate was awarded the Silver Star, Bronze Star, and two Purple Hearts during his military service. As a member of Ronald Reagan's National Security Council staff from 1983 to 1986, North helped plan the rescue of 804 medical students in Grenada, the daring capture of the Achille Lauro hijackers, and an attack on terrorist bases in Libya. Following his military and public service careers, North became an author with 13 titles, all of which have made the New York Times bestseller list. 
He is also the host of War Stories and has been embedded with more than 55 U.S. and Allied combat units as a reporter. Liberty's fifth recipient of the George Rogers Champion of Freedom Award, Oliver North of the United States Marines. I'm grateful to be with you today to accept the George Rogers Champion of Freedom Award. Honestly, I'm humbled because, you see, George Rogers is a real American hero. He was a soldier in the Philippines in 1941, 42. He fought a vicious enemy when the Japanese invaded. He was captured, survived the Bataan Death March, and held as a prisoner of war for over four years. You see, he attributes his survival and he came out of that prisoner of war camp weighing just 85 pounds. He attributes his survival to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is one of the reasons why when I first met him here at Liberty, he was the head of the old time gospel hour, unashamed of his faith, unashamed to express it, and leading others by his example to come, and know, come to know that same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Liberty University would like to recognize and thank all veterans and current members of the armed services who have served on our behalf throughout the world. When your anthem plays, we would ask for you to stand so we can thank you for your service. Army. Coast Guard. Military members and their families, please stand together to allow us to express our appreciation to you at this time. 
If a member of your family is currently on active duty, we ask that you stand also. It's an amazing thought to me that these men and women who don't even know me, don't even know you, two of them, students at Liberty now, would die in combat for us. That's an amazing thing. And that's why I respect everyone in uniform. I thank God for the millions of men and women who have fought and bled and died to guarantee that we can meet here this morning and worship as we do. It isn't, it isn't the media, media. It, isn't it isn't the Congress, the it isn't the courts, courts. it isn't, isn't 600,000 pastors, pastors in America, America who've, given who've given freedom and liberty, and liberty to the 280 million, million, million Americans today. today. It has, it has always, always been the been soldier. soldier. At this time, we would ask for everyone to rise and gentlemen, remove your caps as we observe a moment of silence in honor of all servicemen and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom.
that set the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that Defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, from Lynchburg to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say that I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I want Forget the men who died and gave that right to me. So I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I Forget the men who died and gave that right to me. So I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Cause there ain't special dedication event for the Chair of Honor located at the top of Section 101 here in Williams Stadium. Since World War I, more than 92,000 American soldiers are unaccounted for. The unoccupied seat is dedicated to the memory of those brave men and women and the sacrifices each made while serving this country. Liberty University would like to thank the Rolling Thunder National Office, as well as the Rolling Thunder Virginia Chapter 4, for their efforts in making sure that these American heroes are not forgotten.